Right, so Nicola Sturgeon has just announced she's to resign as leader of the SNP. Who saw that one coming? Well, it's cut short of Starmer's victory lap. Now he's found the balls to probably purge Corbyn, I suppose. But this one has surprised many, seemingly come out of the blue as it has. But having listened to her speech this morning, she's just come across as having had enough. I'm sure a lot of us can relate. Many of us have opted for career changes. And after 30 years in politics, it seems she's come to that conclusion that she's got nothing left to give. And nor does she actually want to try something new, maybe. People are going to pick over her words, her reasoning. They'll opine for better or worse. But it's the consequences of her departure I want to turn my attention to, because if you think not living in Scotland makes us irrelevant, I tend to disagree with you. Sturgeon, together with Alex Salmond, laid waste to all other mainstream parties come 2015, after Labour and the Lib Dems stood with the Tories on a platform to oppose independence the year before. The side of all the big national parties standing up and opposing Scotland, it seemed, played into SNP hands beautifully, and they've retained that iron grip on Scottish politics ever since. Where Scotland used to be Labour country, that party suffered most of all. Sturgeon's departure, having run Scotland very much on a people-focused platform, on a socialist platform successfully as well, as chasing that ever-elusive independence referendum means we're going to be left with a gap. Because for all the clout and the figureheads that the SNP still has, there's nobody like her to come forward. The SNP used to famously be regarded as the Tartan Tories because they weren't remotely left-wing. They were centre-right at best and certainly have much worse amongst their ranks. It's entirely likely, therefore, I think, that the SNP will probably drift rightwards under whoever comes forward to take over this First Minister. It's a depressing thought, really. The caveat, though, would be to look back on the success of what has happened for their party under a more left-wing direction and draw from that. But right-wingers tend to be in it for themselves and change for the worse I think is inevitable. So what could happen here? Perhaps in being so secure in power, it'll be difficult for a comically bad Scottish Tory party or a weakling Labour group to move in on them. Though, of course, that can be influenced by what happens in Westminster. We know the Tories are in dire straits under Sunak. Starmer, as appalling as he is, is in a more comfortable polling position. And if the SNP go too right wing too fast under new leadership, could pave the way for a Scottish Labour return, made all the more perverse because just as in England, Starmer has done nothing to deserve it. Of course, if the SNP do not accelerate to the right as quickly, maybe just take a more centrist position, they become much more Starmer's kind of people, opening the way to an electoral pact, perhaps. Currently, the SNP enjoys an alliance with the Scottish Greens, who, unlike the likes of Labour or the Tories, are actually a completely separate party. They aren't part of the Green Party of England and Wales. That could keep them moderately to the left as well, as reassure people it's still Scotland being governed in Scottish interests. If we saw that reflected in Westminster, it has certainly shown no intention of sliding back to the old part and Tory ways. But given apparent difficulties between the Westminster SNP grouping and Sturgeon, it's unlikely they'd be on the same page here. And of course, the Green Party of England and Wales may not be as amenable to such a suggestion as its Scottish equivalent. Who knows? No such discussions are taking place, have taken place that I know of. Just me having a ponder, really. What might end up making more sense is a Westminster SNP pact with Starmer, maybe. Under a more centrist leadership, it's not completely unthinkable. If Starmer wasn't so politically stupid, he might go for that. We've only a year until the election, after all. I think his ambition and sense of mistaken self-belief may make him think under a more moderate SNP leadership. He could take them down a shugly peg or two, or actually work with them. It'd be good news for him either way. When you consider the Tories are currently polling so badly, they're on target to only be the third largest party as it stands, a right-wing Labour government with a centrist SNP opposition would very much mean business as usual carries on and it's us that'll lose out. The loss of Nicola Sturgeon, whatever you thought of her, means we've almost certainly lost the SNP as a left-of-centre party in UK government and in British politics. And for that, that is a loss for everyone.